ended up with two pieces of paper of notes. Hello everyone and welcome to another vlog. So recently I've been really enjoying making these slightly more structured reading vlogs. To begin with I made a vlog surrounding The Secret History by Donna Tartt and then after that I made a vlog themed around The Lord of the Rings. So I went out onto Instagram to ask you guys what you wanted to see next in terms of reading vlogs and then I took my favorites from everyone's suggestions and went over to Patreon and then I asked my patrons out of the three. I think I picked Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, 1Q84 by Haruki Murakami, and 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez and everyone voted for 100 Years of Solitude so that's what we're reading today but before we get into it I just wanted to thank the sponsor of this video which is Ana Luisa. If you've been watching my channel for a while you would remember me speaking about Ana Luisa. They're a jewelry company that makes really lovely sustainable ethical jewelry. I was lucky enough to actually be sent a few more pieces so this necklace here is the Peshki necklace. I also have on the Sierra ring and finally the Bonnie earring which are these lovely little dainty earrings I have here. Not only is their jewelry beautifully designed and really nice quality, honestly, it lasts so well. It doesn't tarnish for really nice quality jewelry, very affordable. Everything is made in small batches to avoid waste. They're carbon neutral. Their products are all ethically sourced. If you're interested in picking up some lovely, high quality, sustainable jewelry, Ana Luisa are actually currently having their Valentine's Day sale, which is 40% off. Click the link in the description down below and head to their website. We're about to start reading 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, but before we do that, just a little bit about the book. Written by the Colombian author Gabriel Garcia Marquez and published in 1967, 100 Years of Solitude is a magical realism epic that tells the intergenerational history of the Buentia family. The novel is considered to be Marquez's magnum opus and is one of the most influential Spanish texts ever written. The family's patriarch, Jose Arcadio Buendia, is the founder of the fictitious village of Macondo. Located in rural Colombia, the town is, for many years, cut off from the rest of the country. The story follows Jose Arcadio's life and the lives of six generations of Buendias as Macondo lives through catastrophes, civil wars, plagues, uprisings, and a whole lot of magic. The key themes of the novel are the inseparability of past, present, and future, how individual perception shapes history, colonization, corruption, and war, the inescapability of fate, and the circularity of time. This last theme is explored most overtly by the names of the male Buendias, all of whom are either named Jose Arcadio or Aureliano. Their inherited names and therefore lineage impact their personalities. While the Aurelianos were withdrawn but with lucid minds, the Jose Arcadios were impulsive and enterprising. From the normalization of ghosts to characters living well beyond realistic lifespans to torrents of yellow flowers or four year long rains covering the town in mourning to a priest who uses chocolate to levitate, the novel is a speculative masterpiece weaving together images of harrowing violence and realism with beauty and magic. Hello everyone and happy Monday. It is currently about noon and I am taking my lunch break. Last week for lunch I made, if you guys watched my previous vlog, actually I think it was the week before last week, I made cold rolls which were very very healthy and had lots of vegetables in them and marinated chicken. It was very high effort. It was just so beautifully aesthetically healthy and all that kind of stuff. This week I have cup meagering with an egg. So that's just, that's, that's how my effort levels are going this week. But now I'm also going to get started on reading 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I showed this book in my last vlog, the vlog where I made the cold rolls, because this book actually arrived then. So it was a happy coincidence that everyone voted to read this particular one and it only just arrived. And the cover is just absolutely stunning. It's so beautiful. Look how lovely the colors are. I'm gonna start reading this very gently. I'm not gonna get noodles on it, I swear. I have I have done this before. I have eaten many a cup noodle while reading. 
so I will start reading now and not damage my copy. I can't remember if I acknowledged this in the last vlog or not while I was raving about how beautiful this copy of 100 Years of Solitude is, but it perfectly matches my bedspread, so that's just really fun. I have read the first 15 pages or so. I haven't gotten any noodles on it, which is very good, so I'm all the way up to page 19. My first impression of the book after reading the very first chapter is that the writing style is very beautiful. I think it's really quite clear and concrete. There's not heaps of figurative language here, but I think it's really strong strong in how it builds up this world and how it depicts a really vibrant setting and I really really am enjoying the writing style. I think it's the type of style that you need to read quite slowly in order to be able to appreciate it. Like you can't just speed through something like this. I think this book is around 100,000 words. I think maybe it's like 104,000. I feel like this is a book that's going to take a little bit longer just because there are very very long paragraphs but despite the fact that it's obviously like a classic, it's a literary pick, it's a little bit harder to read. I'm finding it very engaging. I'm getting some Angela Carter vibes from the storytelling here, particularly with the Infernal Desire Machines of Dr. Hoffman, but I think that one's very clearly inspired by the magical realism writers of Latin America. So that linkage and similarity I think makes sense because I think it's possible that Angela Carter was inspired by this novel. I have absolutely no idea, that's probably something I'm going to google once I finish reading this. My habit now is to never ever google a book while I'm reading it because I've gotten some really bad spoilers. Anyway, I finished reading chapter one, I think it's really beautifully written, I think the writing style, despite being quite literal, Literary is accessible and really engaging, and I'm very excited to keep reading. It is quite a bit later now. I'm currently up to page 70 and I feel like even though I'm not even a quarter of the way through this book, you know, the book is I think just over 400 pages, so much stuff has happened. I really like the way it's depicting the transition of time. It's going to take me a while to read because it's a slower read but it's also very engaging so I'm not really feeling my attention span drop or anything. Like I, I am really really engaged with the book so I think I'll probably be able to read this book in about three days, that's my hope. This afternoon I actually ended up going and getting my booster shot, so I'd love to be able to read this book over the next few days, but fingers crossed I don't get any notable symptoms from the booster. I didn't have any like significant system systems um symptoms last time I had my vaccines. Getting up to this point, you know, coming in on sort of like one quarter mark of the story, I really am seeing how many people have linked this book with Encanto, and I really enjoyed Encanto. I love Lin Manuel Miranda. He is such a ball of sunshine. I think he's such a talented human being. Basically, anything that he makes, I want to watch. I don't even remember how long ago it was. I've been wanting to read this book for a very long time, much much before I went and watched Encanto but I like that I watched that film because I feel like it helps like give me the context of what Colombia looks like and particularly like rural Colombia because it's not a country I've gotten to see depicted many times before and so I really like that I have that sort of like visual imagery to draw from. I think there's a significant link between this book and Encanto but there's also a lot of differences. The main character, not the main character but like the matriarch of the story, Ursula, her and her husband they're like cousins and then they speak about like if you have a child with your cousin they'll have like a pig's tail and like it seems like it's going to be a theme in this book. So obviously that's a departure from Encanto. <laughs> However the linkages I have seen so far between this book, A Hundred Years of Solitude and Encanto, Encanto is that uh, there's a very strong matriarchal character here in the character of Ursula. This particular family founded the village that they live in like the family in Encanto did. The house they built in this book isn't sentient but it seems to have a personality of its own in the way that it's depicted. Also a lot of magic here because it is a magical realism book and I'm really loving like the gentle magical elements of this world. I'm going to go back to reading this now because I want to get quite a chunk of this read tonight. Hello and happy Tuesday. I'm currently up to page 110. I'm still really, really enjoying the book. I did manage to get quite a bit more read last night. Given that I got the booster yesterday, I feel pretty good. Like I have the mi our glasses. I have the mildest headache and I also feel a bit tired. I'm finding that today I'm struggling to look at my computer and I don't know if this is eye strain because my eyes have been like, I think I need to go to the optometrist basically. It's been a while since I've been and I think I've been getting 
eye strain recently because I need to get my glasses updated. But today specifically, I'm really struggling to look at my computer screen because the light is so bright because I think I have a headache because of the booster. Other than that though, I feel really, really fine. Tyler, on the other hand, my partner, he is not feeling very good today. Hopefully he feels better soon and hopefully I don't start feeling worse. So fingers crossed. But anyway, I've read quite a bit of the book. I realized that there was another Encanto reference in here on page 91. In the effort to avoid spoilers, I'm not going to say like who this character's name is, what their name is rather. <laughs> Ursula ordered a morning period of closed doors and windows with no one entering or leaving except on matters of utmost necessity. She prohibited any talking aloud for a whole year and put this character's daguerreotype, which is like a photograph I found out after googling it, in the place where their body had been laid out with a black ribbon around it and an oil lamp that was always to be kept lighted. Future generations who never let the lamp go out would be puzzled at the photo of the person in the clothes that they are wearing and they were never able to connect that person with the image of a grandparent. So yeah, there's a, there's a lamp in this book that's not allowed to go out, which very much reminds me of the lamp candle thingy from in Kanto. It's really amazing to me how big this story feels even though it's not using up a lot of words to tell the story. Like it's written in a very concise way and even though there's a lot of characters and the characters are very confusing. They all have the same names. It's it's there's actually a like family tree at the beginning of the book that sort of shows like, how everyone's related and, and, and half of the characters have like the same name. Anyway, despite the fact that there's so many characters, I feel like every character is unique. They all have a significant amount of depth. They all feel believable and well fleshed out. So I think today, because I'm really struggling to look at my computer because of the headache, because of the booster, I think I'm just going to end up reading quite a bit of this. For some reason this is fine, probably because there's no light coming out of it. Maybe this was a good strategic decision to film part of this reading vlog after getting the booster. So now I can just take the excuse to spend the whole day reading. <laughs> quite a bit later. I tried to get some work done. I tried to sit down at my computer and, and every time I look at the screen my, my eyes just hurt so much. So I really have just decided to buckle down and read this book instead because I I can't I can't work. <laughs> I wanted to jump in here and give a very small update because I'm up to page well I'm just past page 174. Currently this far of the way through the book. I'm almost halfway through the book. I'm trying to keep tabs on everyone and not get confused by all the character names and trying to remember all the backstories because we have so many characters here and we're going through so many years and so many things are happening so I'm just trying to just trying to keep on top of all of that. I love Ursula's character. Like she's such an interesting, powerful matriarch character. Like she is so, she just has so much power within her family. And, and I care very much about Ursula's character. I really love how dislikable some of the female characters are here. Like Amaranta, there's a, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's a section where she's just so cold to someone and it's devastating. And it's so like, it's, is really fun to read. <laughs> I'm excited to see how much I can read tonight. Banana bread is almost done. I always forget how long it takes to cook banana bread. It takes like 50 minutes. If you can hear a like whooshing sound, that's our dishwasher going. So just ignore that. I wanted to jump in here and show you guys the little chart I've ended up making. Because we have such a large family here, the Buendia family is enormous because people's names are repeated so many times. I need to actually write it down. So I have this little chart that I've made with some notes on it. And I recommend if you want absolutely no spoilers for the book, skipping this little section 
just because there's obviously going to be spoilers in these notes so feel free if you haven't read the book yet and you want to skip any possible spoilers um skip to this time past when i'm showing this little chart i'm almost up to page 200 but these are my notes like my like visual notes on the family tree i also have another document where i'm keeping notes as well but this is just sort of the really really high level stuff that i need to remember the story and so we have the head of the family which is jose arcadio actually i think i've been spelling his name wrong i think i read it wrong when i first <laughs> opened the book arcadio arcadio yeah that's not that's that's not correct uh Radio. He's married to Ursula and then we follow down with his children but then there are many many generations in this story. Here is the family tree at the beginning of the book and I've been referring to this so much. This is how I am trying to remember by writing down the key notes with each character um, so I can distinguish which Arcadio is which. <laughs> It is currently midday on Wednesday. I, in the end, actually ended up spending a lot of time last night reading. I got through quite a bit of the book and then I read some more this morning as well. I'm quite surprised by how much I've read in the last like 18 hours. I only have about 50 pages left of the book and I'm interested to see what's gonna happen in this little denouement. There's been some foreshadowing to suggest what's gonna happen to the village of Macondo after the story or maybe perhaps in the last sort of 50 pages that I'm reading. The last sort of section of the book has been really beautifully tragic and very forlorn and sort of realistic in how unlucky it is for many of the characters. So my current update at this point is that I'm still very very much enjoying the book. I mentioned yesterday that I was keeping notes both on my little family tree thingy that I made and also on my phone. So I keep notes on all of the quotes and things I like and you know anything I think is particularly relevant that I think I'm going to need later. So I write down the page numbers and I write notes I wrote down a quote that I was reading this morning that I just, I absolutely loved. Okay, I couldn't be bothered getting my tripod out. So you guys are sitting on a Lego Harry Potter set that I haven't made yet in two notebooks. And also a copy of Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Home. <laughs> Page 321. Watching him putting in latches and repairing clocks, Fernanda wondered whether or not he might too be falling into the vice of building so that he could take a part. Like Colonel Aureliano Buendia and his little gold fishes, Amaranta and her shroud and her buttons, Jose Arcadio and the parchments, and Ursula and her memories. That quote is, oh, it's so beautiful. And it just like the linkage of the themes with how these characters build and then dismantle and that sort of being a metaphor for life. You know, we're born and then we make all these things and then as we grow older, in this sort of cyclical and cathartic way, we take back down. I love that image. I think that's such a beautiful little sentence and I just, I loved it so, so very much. There you go. You guys get to see my little makeshift tripod. A little update for how I'm feeling in terms of the booster. I feel fine still, aside from the headache. I feel like maybe this really is just eye strain and the booster and headache that came from the booster has kind of exacerbated the symptoms. By symptom, I mean like the fact that I still can't really look at my computer without my eyes hurting. And so I've now made an appointment with the optometrist to get new glasses because clearly I am due for some new glasses. But anyway, I'm gonna sit down and read this book now and finish it off. And then I will check back in with you guys to give you my final thoughts.
can't, I can't even form words. My glasses are so dirty anyway. It was a really, really beautifully told story. So masterfully told. Like I, I, I've spoken quite a bit in this vlog about how many people there are in the Buendia family who have similar names. And all of that ties back to the central themes of this book about people's fates being repeated. And oh, it was so good. It was just so, so, so very good. In terms of the notes I had to make on the family tree, I don't think you can see the writing very well. So I'm not gonna say this is a spoilery bit. Do not read the tiny writing here because there's spoilers, but I ended up with two pieces of paper of notes of me trying to remember the different things that happened to the Buendia family that I couldn't remember. Like the fact that I don't have Ursula at the top of this family tree is because I remembered everything that happened to Ursula because she was very, very easy to remember. So this is only the stuff I was struggling to remember. The ending was really, really satisfying. There was a bit at the very end which sort of like drew back this moment from the beginning of the story, which is something that I really, really love. I cannot believe how well these characters were written. There were so many characters in this book and yet they all had such depth. To begin with, I was a little bit nervous about reading this book because I had been told by some people that there were significant content warnings in here. And like I've mentioned this before that as a reader, I don't tend to use content warnings. I'll just tend to read the content anyway. But often when I'm speaking about the book, I provide content warnings for other people in case they want to use them. There's quite a bit of incest in here. There's, there's quite a significant amount of people trying to be in relationships with children. There's more than one mass shooting scene in here. If you're a person who needs content warnings, I'd recommend looking them up before reading this book because there's, there's a lot of things <laughs> covered in here. But yeah, I just thought it was such a unique and wonderful and epic story. I cannot believe this is only a hundred thousand words. It feels so much bigger. It takes a bit more work to, <laughs> to keep up with everything, but I didn't mind that at all. I think that's everything I have to say. I love this book. I loved getting to read it over the last few days. And yes, this was an absolute masterpiece genuinely five stars so brilliant um and i yeah that's it <laughs> thank you very much for watching and also an enormous thank you to everyone over on patreon for supporting my channel over on patreon we have a whole bunch of lovely bonus content including exclusive videos and a private discord server so if you're interested in checking out patreon there is a link in the description down below take care everyone and i will see you next time Bye bye